away from outside. Please welcome Cam something. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Rebecca moments on Ted Lasso. Where did you get these? I'm glad you like them. You know what? I'll start bringing these to you every morning. Call Biscuits with the Boss. That really isn't necessary. Okay, well mark this down as the first time we disagree then. I have something I need to tell you. Mm, deja vu. Maybe it's different this time, you know? People can change. Some can. She can't. For this list, we're looking at the moments that made Rebecca Welton such a great character, and actress Hannah Waddingham an Emmy winner. Keep in mind, there will be spoilers from the first two seasons. What's your favorite Rebecca moment? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Rebecca's Plan Getting AFC Richmond in her divorce, Rebecca immediately shakes things up by firing the head coach in a totally boss manner. Still, if I'm being completely honest, George, you're fired because I'm the owner now and I don't like you. <laughs> now do piss off, you fat twat. She proceeds to replace him with Ted, even though he's known for coaching a different kind of football. Nevertheless, it appears that Ted's optimism and Rebecca's ability to command a room might make a winning combination. Now, Coach Lasso may not have the CV that you all find acceptable, but he does have one thing this club doesn't, a trophy from this millennium. So, like it or not, Richmond are changing the way we do things. And from now on, that way is the Lasso way. That's not what Rebecca wants, however. She reveals to Higgins that she only hired Ted to sabotage the team and hurt her ex-husband. Rebecca easily could have come off as unlikable and villainous here. Oh, he's an absolute wanker. I know. Uh, pardon? I hope he fails miserably. See, my ex-husband truly loved only one thing his entire life, this club. And Ted Lasso is gonna help me burn it to the ground. Thanks to Waddingham's comedic timing and her character's understandable motivations, though, we quickly connect with Rebecca. We don't root for her to succeed in this endeavor, but we do hope to see her find happiness. Number 9. Rebecca Asks Ted to Stay Throughout the first season, Rebecca goes from trying to destroy the team to rebuilding it into something better. We're only one goal down, there's still a chance! Come on, Richmond! Oh, I love you when you give a shit! By the time Rebecca finds redemption, though, it appears it may be too late for Richmond. In the season finale, Rebecca gets what she initially thought she wanted when the team loses a crucial game and Ted offers to quit. Well, Ted, that was certainly a heartbreaking result. Yes, ma'am. And I've been thinking about it. I think it's mighty unfair that you have to fire me. So if it's all the same to you, I'd like to spare you the trouble and just quit. Rebecca rejects Ted's resignation, insisting that he stay on board and that they reclaim Richmond's glory next season. You listen to me, Coach Lasso. You are not going anywhere because we have work to do. Next season. It goes to show just how much Rebecca has changed since we met her. But two things remain the same. First, Rebecca is a natural leader, even if she occasionally needs somebody to lead her in the right direction. Second, Rebecca should be more cautious of Ted's sensitive taste buds. <coughs> oh, the bubbles. <coughs> I'm sorry. Did I get you? Number 8. Keeping Sam on the Team Mirroring real-world issues, Sam refuses to further participate in a marketing campaign for Richmond's sponsor, learning that their parent company is polluting his home country. Of course you don't have to do it, Sam. We'll take care of it. Rebecca is forced to choose between one of her players and the almighty dollar. With encouragement from her goddaughter Nora, Rebecca writes an email to CEO Richard Cole, letting him know who's the boss. We personally like Nora's version better, but Rebecca does borrow one line as her final mic drop. Sincerely, boss ass bitch. Sincerely, boss ass bitch. Rebecca isn't the only one who stands by Sam, as the whole team protests Dubai Air on the field. Rebecca couldn't be prouder of her team, and we couldn't be prouder of Rebecca when she ignores Richard's call. Nora says it best. Boss ass bitch. Number 7. Rebecca's Banter Match We all had our theories about who Rebecca's banter match would be, but even Hannah Waddingham was surprised by the Sam reveal. Actor Tahib Jimo apparently quote, had no clue either. Miss Watson, uh, Rebecca. Ah, Sam! Hi. <laughs> well, that's a coincidence. 
It's a classic sitcom setup when the two finally meet up and come to a startling revelation. At the same time, the writers put a fresh spin on this familiar trope. Oh. oh shit. What? Shit. What? Shit. What? 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 what, what, what God, this what? can't be happening. Rebecca acknowledges up front that this relationship probably won't work, namely because she's Sam's boss. Nevertheless, the two can't deny the mutual attraction and choose to see where it goes. Sam ultimately makes Rebecca happy, which leaves her with mixed feelings. Why did you send me your address? For next time. In a bittersweet breakup, Rebecca decides she needs to be alone before she can be in another relationship. Does this scare you? Yes. And I, I think I need to figure out why. Oh, man. Number six, spreading Christmas cheer. Ted Lasso and Christmas. It's a natural combination. Grab a coat, you're coming with me. Yes, ma'am. This show is already so heartwarming, however, that it needed to go the extra mile for a holiday special like this. The episode delivers, and Rebecca is one of the main reasons why. Like Ebenezer Scrooge, Rebecca saw the light the previous season. Yes, we're terribly sorry that your presence didn't arrive last night, but as elves, we've been personally directed by Mr. and Mrs. Claus to deliver your presence this afternoon and to apologize for the delay. So when Christmas time comes around, Rebecca spends the day giving back. Knowing that Ted will be alone on Christmas, she recruits him as her helper. On to the next. Heck yeah. They don't just go door to door with a bag of toys. They give out multiple bags of toys. The experience is also Rebecca's gift to Ted, as she understands what it's like to be recently divorced around Christmas. Look, I know all too well how stunningly shitty the first Christmas after you get divorced can be. I just wanted to make sure you're okay. Who needs Elton John's party when you have Rebecca's singing chops? Number five, never gonna give you up. I don't really know what to say. Um. Aside from her own failed marriage, Rebecca's parents didn't give her the highest expectations for romance. When her father passes, Rebecca tells her mother about his affairs. It's a powerful, brilliantly edited moment that mirrors Ted's father issues. And Sassy didn't say anything for the first time in her life, and I just screamed, choked, cried. And came running after me in his dressing gown, begging me to stop, but I just ran upstairs and called 911. Rebecca is shocked to learn that her mother knew about the cheating, leaving her feeling resentful towards both parents. Despite her daughter's harsh words, Rebecca's mother responds with love, support, and advice. During her eulogy, Rebecca isn't sure what to say. As Ted arrives, she finds the perfect words. Or song, we suppose. Never gonna give you up. Never gonna let you down. Never gonna run around and desert you. Never Gonna Give You Up not only sums up Rebecca's love for her mother, but also her parents' relationship. Others may grow sick of the song, but Rebecca's mom can't fall out of love. Never gonna give, never gonna give. Give you up. Never gonna give, never gonna give. Give you up. Number four, Rebecca and Keeley's friendship. The press are never awful to men. No one ever pays a fortune for a photo of a naked man on a yacht in New York a week after his divorce. Whoa, that's like a very specific scenario. Rebecca isn't looking for friendship at the beginning of the series, but she quickly forms an unbreakable one with Keeley. Their friendship begins with a cactus, which Keeley gets for Rebecca after she prevents a tabloid story about her and Ted from going to print. It made me think of you. It's strong and a bit prickly. Keeley doesn't realize, however, that Rebecca was responsible for those misleading photos. While Rebecca can be prickly, Keely gets to her soft center on the red carpet and on a weekend getaway. Just put one foot in front of the other, yeah? And if you put your hand on your hip, I make like a claw shape. It's the most flattering. Even after Keely learns about Rebecca's plan, their friendship perseveres. Although upset, Keely knows that Rebecca is better than this, encouraging her to do the right thing. I mean, what would be the point of telling Ted now? It doesn't change anything. It would change how I feel about you. 
if you've seen Hannah Waddingham and Juno Temple together in person, you know their on-screen friendship isn't purely acting. It is 100% genuine. I swear to God if I could break off one of her arms and give it to you because that's what you are to me. There's no Rebecca without Keely, and if you ever leave my life, I'm going to stalk you. Number three, a frozen heart melts. Snow glows white on the mountain night, not a footprint to be seen. Although she starts as something of an ice queen, it isn't long until Rebecca's frozen heart begins to thaw. What better way to signify this turning point than with Elsa's signature song? Like Elsa, Rebecca reveals a whole new side of herself by sharing her amazing singing voice. Don't let them in, don't let them see. Be the good girl you always have to be. What's more, Let It Go is about claiming your independence. While she's been divorced for a while, Rebecca finally breaks free through her karaoke performance. For Ted, however, the lyrics summon other emotions that he's been keeping inside. As Ted suffers a panic attack, Rebecca helps him catch his breath. Ted, it's okay. It's okay. Try to breathe. I can't, I can't, I can't, I don't know what's going on. For anyone who thought Rebecca was the villain of the series, this was the moment that officially showed everyone her true colors. I'm going crazy. No more than anyone else. <laughs> There we go. Number 2. Charity Ball Rebecca's redemption arguably commences in episode 4, as she puts on her annual charity gala without Rupert. Well, you're working on your speech, huh? Rupert was always very good at the public speaking part. Naturally, nothing goes according to plan. Singer Robbie Williams backs out of the event, and when Rupert makes a surprise appearance, he suspiciously knows Robbie's number. As Rebecca's thunder is stolen, she lets her defenses down in front of Ted for the first time. I used to think his blunt honesty was noble rather than what it really is, which is just the cruelest way of hiding his own insecurities. Rebecca is even more open with Keeley, who can relate to being with a partner who hasn't been entirely faithful. I mean, everyone makes mistakes, but I was married to a man for 12 years who never once took responsibility for any single one of them. The audience begins to see Rebecca's humanity, briefly forgetting about her revenge plan. With some further help from Ted and street artist Cam, Rebecca ends the night on a high note while also learning a lesson about judging a book by its cover. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Rebecca's Confession While Rebecca initially judges Ted, the audience judges Rebecca in the early episodes. Ted, I lied to you. I hired you because I wanted this team to lose. I wanted you to fail, then I sabotaged you every chance I've had." Just as Ted surprises Rebecca, though, Rebecca surprises us, especially in Season 1's penultimate episode. Usually when a character keeps a secret, it comes out at the worst time against their will, leading to breakups and feelings of betrayal. This club is all that Rupert has ever cared about, and I wanted to destroy it, to cause him as much pain and suffering as he has caused me. Ted Lasso defies all expectations, however. Rebecca outright tells Ted the truth, bearing her soul with a tear-jerking apology. All you good people just trying to make a difference. Ted, I'm so sorry. Ted is nearly moved to tears as well, but he quickly forgives Rebecca, understanding what drove her to this. Ted's response catches Rebecca off guard. But given everything these two have been through together, their reconciliation couldn't feel more earned. I forgive you. You what? Why? Divorce is hard. And it doesn't matter if you're the one leaving or if you're the one who got left. It makes folks do crazy things. You can see why this episode deservingly won Waddingham the Emmy. Come on, just shake this hand. My arm's starting to get... 
<laughs> Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.